Hey friends, I'm Laura Kashner and you're listening to The Simplified Podcast. If you're looking for a quiet place where you can filter out the noise and the hustle, this is it. Every week, we invite you to slow down and join us to explore practical ways to organize and automate the complicated parts of life so that you can focus on what truly matters most. One of the fastest ways to find peace is to empty all of your thoughts onto paper. So we thought, why not write in something pretty? That's why we created our beautiful collection of linen journals. Each journal comes with a gorgeous pattern on the front with 100 pages of thick lined paper for you to record whatever's on your heart. They're a perfect gift for a friend, a teacher, or just yourself. You can find our journal collection right now over at emilylay.com. Do you remember when you were little and you were watching The Little Mermaid and you just kind of assumed that Ariel and Prince Eric would live happily ever after because that's where the story ended? Did you think that was going to happen to you when you found your own Prince Eric? That finding each other was the hard part and you just figure out everything as it came along and it would be fine. I mean, didn't we all kind of believe that on some level? Then one day you wake up and (laughs) you're snapping at Prince Eric because the new kitchen table you paid way too much for is finally being delivered after a five-month delay. But shoot, the delivery window is way earlier than you thought it would be and One of you has a deadline to make while the other one needs to go for a run, and you both feel like it's vital to your sanity to do these things, and couldn't your partner just please take care of it? And by the way, you need to get the girls off to school, the dog needs to go out, then you put dinner in the crock pot because it's the last day before the chicken goes bad, and you don't want to throw away any more money over chicken you forgot to use again. Also, your in-laws are coming tomorrow for a week-long visit. When you're up there at the altar and promising to love each other through better or worse, these aren't the days that are on your mind, right? But then there are days when you get a phone call that they found a lump, or you find out that you've made a five-figure mistake at work, or you find out that your kid has been struggling for months with a bully at school, and you don't know a thing about it until they climb into the car one day in tears, and your knee-jerk response is to call your person. Of course it is because they're right beside you, down in the foxhole, when things go south. And then, thankfully, (laughs) there are other kinds of moments. Moments like when you're walking on the beach, like a literal cliche, and you're watching the sunset, and the sky is orange and pink and navy and just gorgeous. Or you watch him read The Day the Crayons Quit to your daughter for the 47th night in a row, and he uses silly little voices for all the different crayon colors, which you find nerdy and adorable and perfect. You laugh, you fight, you choose each other over and over again. That is marriage, isn't it? Every generation kind of makes marriage its own thing. The way Alex and I are partnered is it the same way that my parents were, and that's totally normal. I mean, even the way Jessa and her husband Tyler make their marriage work is different from Alex and me. It's different for every couple, and I'm fascinated to hear what makes each couple tick, especially my fellow millennials. So that's what we're going to talk about today. Jessa and I are going to get real about our marriages, both the good and the hard. We're not doing it to be gossipy. We're not doing it to say, look at us go. We're sharing about them because relationships are messy and wonderful, and we learn a lot when we're vulnerable with each other. I've gotten so much wisdom from people who have opened their lives to me, and I want to do that for other people too. Also, let me take a second to say that being married doesn't make us special. You don't have to be married or partnered to matter. There are so many relationships that make up our lives, and all of them are so, so important. At the end of the day, each of us makes the choice to be in a relationship with other people, to share our lives with them. Sometimes it's with friends. Sometimes it's with family. But building relationships, no matter what it looks like, is important. And with that, you guys, let's get to it. Here's my conversation with Jessa. Hey, Jay. What's up? Are you ready to talk about marriage? Go into the chapel. I'm so pumped. Oh, I wanted you to keep going. That was sounding so lovely. Thank you so much. Tyler's the singer in the marriage, so. (laughs) (laughs) Speaking of, tell us about Tyler. Where did you meet how did you meet? Was it love at first sight? What? I feel like this should be an evening episode where we're just like sipping on something, just <laughs> chatting, girl chat. Let's paint a picture of who Tyler is for 
the listener. Tyler is a six foot four previous football defensive and offensive lineman. He did have for a long time longer hair than me. He just recently cut it to about right past his shoulders. Think Chris Stapleton meets Channing Tatum. When I met Tyler, he was much smaller. We met in fifth grade. Stop. Yes, we went to the same elementary school. Actually, I was in fourth grade and he was in sixth grade. But he was leaving. He was going to middle school. I thought that was so cool. We met at a Halloween party. This was my first party that was not a birthday party. It was my first party where boys were at this party. And I remember just like the the butterflies, all the feelings. Yeah. And then I never saw him again until like seventh grade. So when I was in seventh grade and I got to middle school... He was in ninth grade. And so by that time, he was already playing football. Muscles were starting to appear. And I, again, was just goo around him. I would melt. And the fun part is, is he dated all my friends before he dated me. Oh, that's nice. I got to like really wait it out. The waiting was fine. And so what ended up happening is I ended up going to a different high school He went off to play football at college. He had a knee injury in football. He came home and I was in my senior year and he slid right into my DMs on MySpace. (laughs) MySpace. (laughs) Where every good love story starts. And the rest is history, guys. Like we've been together ever since the first time we met up. He's like, hey, do you want to meet up? And I'm the most awkward human on the face of this planet. You guys think I'm so cool. I get messages from you guys and I'm like, guys, no. The internet makes me way cooler. I told this boy, (laughs) I told him, I said, hey, I knew exactly where he lived. I knew where he lived for years. Duh. I said, hey, I have to drop. I cannot say this. on. Yes, you can. (laughs) You're already in it. (laughs) I said, hey, I have to drop off this Bible to my friend around the corner. Why did I do? Why? Like, I'm not even making this up. It's so embarrassing. (laughs) And he was like, okay, yeah, you can come by. And so like I stopped by and we sat on the tailgate of his truck and we talked for, I'm not even kidding. I got there around like 1030 to drop off a Bible. I didn't go home till about 130. And it was just us talking. That was it. We just talked and talked and talked. And it's precious. It's amazing. And how many years have you been married now? We have been married 12 years. We've been together 13 years. Amazing. Same with us. Oh my gosh, 2010, 2011. Yeah. Yep, same with us. Oh, I love that so much. Okay, so how are you guys alike and how are you different? Like, what's the vibe in the Bray household on most days? Okay, so we are very much alike and we are both very creative people. This is a blessing and a curse because so I do feel like we are so alike in that way. I feel like we have very much the same sense of humor. When it comes to faith and beliefs, we are very much on the same page. Politics is where we start to find some differences, which is so cool. Like healthy. It is so healthy. We've really gotten past the like debating it out stage. And I I truly love listening to his like take on some things. And Mm. he likes listening to mine. And we're not like night and day on politics or anything like that. But there's just different places that we stretch each other in how we think. Also, how we're different is Tyler being a creative, he would rather be spontaneous and throw the schedule out the window and create a memory. Whereas I, I do love creating memories, but I also like happy children. There's friction there sometimes, like in the day-to-day of like schedules and him feeling like he's been working all day, but he wants to do something fun. So, you know, we we figure that out. What did you think marriage was going to be like? I had incredible parents. I had parents that were the best of teammates. They worked together and really showed my brother and I how to just kind of champion each other and whatever they wanted to do. So my mom changed careers like in her mid-30s from being a paralegal to being a youth pastor. That was a huge deal. She went to seminary. I remember that. And my dad just like, powering through and working and they ended up getting a divorce. And so when I looked to marriage, 
when I did, which was around 18 years old, we got married when I was 18. I was hoping marriage, I feel like most kids from divorced parents do, they want it to be successful. I remember thinking that I just wanted my marriage to last. And I did want that teammate aspect of my marriage. I, I did want to bring that, what I learned from my parents that way into marriage, but I expected marriage to be just a really safe place for me. I think that was like the number one thing on my list. And Tyler was definitely that. Was it the right time? Like, could it have gone a little different? I'm sure. Could we have not rushed into it? Probably. But I was seeking safety. And so I was going to say that word. Yes. Yeah. I love yeah. that. That's beautiful. What about marriage is easier than you thought it would be? There's so many things that can come easier as you grow in marriage. I'm going to be very honest. When Tyler and I started, nothing came easy. I mean, it really felt like everything was hard. Yeah. But gosh, just trust comes so much easier, right? Loving someone unconditionally becomes so much easier because once you're married and you're seeing what this person is carrying with them from being raised into becoming a father and to his careers and leading teams of people and, and all of that, like you see what they carry. And I think when you see what they carry, you're able to empathize so much more with them than when you're not living together, maybe like where you're not encountering the day-to-day -day stresses and burdens that someone is carrying. And so it's hard to kind of empathize with them when you don't experience those with them. I think seeing Tyler has grown so much easier when he walks in you just know like i i just know like oh, dang it's been one of those days and like or i wonder what happened he is in such a good mood like like he had a win today i want to know what that is like so i think i think seeing him has become so much easier that is so beautiful like almost brought me to tears and i think when you're living together and you're now on years of being together and being a team, you do see the highest of highs and the lowest of lows. And so like your level of respect and your level of just like love just grows and grows and grows because you're just, you're doing this thing together. Yes. You're in it. This is the only person you're in it with. Right. This And that all, it, that is unlike a huge any deal. other relationship. Yes. Yes. I go back to that word safety and like security, like he's it for me. Yep. Right. Like, so I've got all my eggs in this basket. <laughs> like I do. And, and I definitely think that there's feelings there on either side of whether that's the right thing to do or the wrong thing to do. But for us and our marriage and the way that we see marriage, that is the most loving thing that we can do with one another is trust each other fully. And it is so cool that he has been my best friend for 13 years like it, that's insane like and the things that we've both messed up on and, and done like there's so many mistakes that we've made but to know that I'm not going anywhere like this is it. right like it, there's yeah. just so much safety and security there yeah yeah oh I love it so what has been harder than you thought it would be gosh let's just go with parenting <laughs> parenting we were growing up so much of our marriage anyway getting married at 18 and 20 you watch each other grow up in so many different ways and parents in the midst of that open so many different old wounds, new conversations, things you never considered that are important to you. All of those things that come up are hard. Like they're just, they're hard to work through. And so it doesn't mean that it isn't good. It's just hard work. And I think that that's important. I wouldn't consider it just hard. And like, it's just this blanket term where it's difficult. It's hard work. It is active. It is ever-changing. It's evolving. It's daily. It's hourly. Yes, yes, yes. And all of those things that you're able to see with your persons, you see that they've had a bad day or like, you know, a conversation was had with a family member and that brought up a lot of stuff from years ago that we thought we were through, but you still have to parent and discipline in the moment of now while you're dealing with all of those things. And it's been harder than I expected, especially with Leland's age, 
which he's nine years old now, coming into a lot of feelings. Mm -hmm. And I know that you know that that's the case. So, so yeah, I would say parenting. And I would say it's also harder to like just get that time together where it's just us having three kids, you know, like what are the things that we love to do? God, I love being in the car with Tyler. It's one of my favorite things. It sounds so lame. Just the two of you? Just the two of us. Yeah. Like I remember just like, when we were dating and we were without kids, like that was one of my favorite things to do because we were on our way to do something fun. And like that anticipation of just like, I'm with my boyfriend. So like all those things come like flooding back and, and I, and I get real giddy when, when we're like, we don't have a lot of time. Kids are with a sitter. We've got like two hours. Let's go get something to eat. Nine times out of 10, I'll pick somewhere a little further away so we get more time in the car. Longer drive. I yeah. love that. Oh, <laughs> I love that. Getting to know yourself can be a lifelong process, especially since we're always growing and changing. The last 10 years of my life have been full of change from getting married to having kids to getting into a groove in my career. It's been a lot of change. Therapy is all about deepening your self-awareness and understanding because sometimes we don't know what we want or why we react the way that we do until we talk through things. BetterHelp connects you with a licensed therapist who can take you on that journey of self-discovery from where you are. Listen, therapy is so helpful. It's not just for when you're going through a crisis. It can help you learn positive coping skills and how to set boundaries. Thank God for boundaries. (laughs) Honestly, it just empowers you to be the best version of yourself. So if you're thinking of starting therapy, give BetterHelp a try. It's entirely online, super flexible, and suited to your schedule. Just fill out a brief questionnaire to get matched with a licensed therapist and switch therapist anytime for no additional charge. Discover your potential with BetterHelp. Visit betterhelp.com slash simplified today to get 10% off your first month. That's betterhelp, H-E-L-P dot com slash simplified. Do you ever wish you could talk to your dog sometimes? I sure do. Like, am I really Boomer's favorite human? Uh, The answer is yes. Honestly, you know when this would come in handy is when Boomer's not feeling good because I don't know when something's up with him until something is up. You know what I mean? Well, Maeve hasn't invented dog texting yet, but they definitely figured out how to help your dog feel their best. Did you know that dogs feel their best when they're on unprocessed, high-protein, low-carb diets? Kibbles just don't deliver that. But Maeve is protein-rich, raw food for dogs, and it helps your dog with things you can smell, feel, and see, from better breath to regular bowel movements and maintaining a healthy weight. Most dog parents see results in 28 days or less, plus there's no mess, there's no prep, and no thawing. Just open, pour, and serve. It's that easy. Dare I say simple. Listen, we are bougie on a budget over here, and that includes Boomer. We want to make sure he stays happy and healthy so we can save in the long run on his vet bills, So that means we try to give him the best nutrition we can. And y'all, Boomer loves this Maeve food. He wolfs it down like nothing else. Plus I can tell his coat is definitely more healthy and real talk, his breath is even better. So, you know, puppy kisses are like a little less gross. (laughs) So make the switch to raw food today. Right now, Maeve is offering $40 off your first order at meetmave.com slash simplified. Go to meetmave.com slash simplified. That's spelled M-A-E-V to receive $40 off your first order. That's meetmave, M-A-E-V.com slash simplified. Speaking of kids and parenting, let's talk about how that really changes the dynamic of a relationship. All of a sudden, you're going from just the two of you to more than that. I don't think you're quite prepared for how that's going to change your life until it's happening. What was the biggest change in your marriage and how you guys related to each other when kids started coming? I think the number one thing that we experience, and I I feel like this is true for most people, is before kids, all of my affection, emotion, devotion, attention was either on Tyler or on myself. I mean, that's it. There were two people there. You see them. You hear what they're saying when they say like, hey, I had a really hard day and it's being, it's it's been getting harder and harder and I, I don't know if I'm wanting to do this anymore at work. And I think I'm thinking of a career change. Like those little like hints and stuff, like they're so much easier to pick up on. They're so much easier to talk through when it's just you and the other person, when life is happening, when kids, it's almost like, okay, yeah. Can we talk about that? Like after dinner? Yeah. And so being able to be fluid in those situations, I think that that's been the biggest change is not 
getting in our own feelings of like, okay, it's not that he doesn't want to pay attention to me right now, or it's not that I don't want to pay attention to him. It's that there are very real things happening in this moment. I care about you. I love you. We're going to, we're going to talk through it. I think that was, a, I think that was the biggest change for us is splitting attention, splitting affection. And so that was really hard for me to realize and to like understand because it was very much like, I need you to see that I'm giving so much to these other little people and I, I have this much left over and I still haven't showered in three days. So I was just wondering if I could like do that and then like we could talk about it. There's just a lot of sacrifice. There's so much sacrifice on each side. And if there's anything I would tell someone if they're married and looking to have kids is you need to be okay with sacrifice. <laughs> Yes. When it comes to your time, your wants, your needs for another person or multiple people. <laughs> yes. And that communication will solve 95% of your – Oh, yeah. Your, <laughs> instead of holding it in and just assuming he knows that, oh, my gosh, I'm feeding three people right now who need me and then I have to clean the kitchen. Then I have to yeah. get ready for bedtime. Then I have to get them to bed. And then I would yep. love to shower. And then I am so – ready to sit here and listen to what you want to tell me. But but so often we just we keep that all inside and think that they should just know that that's how it They should know that. You should know that like I am a a spin like I literally in the kitchen at night, I feel like I'm a tornado and I just like turn from counter to counter and person to person and I don't leave this 3 foot radius of life mm -hmm. and giving everything every ounce of energy and just all of that to the people around me. But literally, like I have turned around. I've done this unsuccessfully and I've done this successfully any given day <laughs> of the week. And the successful one is, babe, I love you and I hear you. I'm really overwhelmed in this moment. I have this going on. And then this person's going to need me for this. And nine times out of 10, he is like, okay, what can I do? How can I help you? Like, I totally get it. Lucy is absolutely ratchet. Let me just <laughs> figure her out. Like, <laughs> and I'm like, thank you. That's great. And the unsuccessful one is me turning around and being like, do you know what I do? <laughs> you know, I, <laughs> and I still do that 13 years and I still catch myself like responding not the right way, obviously. We're human, right? We're human. I love Flesh that. and bone. Yep. So something I think a lot about is how we have so much information. We have the internet at our yes. disposal. If we need something in seconds, we can have the answer compared to what, you know, it was like for our parents. And there's a bigger emphasis on mental health and emotional awareness than there ever was when we were kids growing up. Yeah. Do you think that's helped your marriage? The, the, importance of mental health in our society right now? Yeah, I think how I was raised, where I come from, my home was always, they did an incredible job of being aware of any kind of mental health, any struggles that my brother and I were going through. I was put in counseling or therapy when I was, gosh, 12. And that was just because of having issues with girls in middle school, like every other girl going to middle school. But my parents really took that seriously. I'm so grateful because it really, really made me respect that part of my health and that it is important and it is something to be addressed, no matter how big or small the issue may feel. Tyler and the way that he was raised, not that he was raised terribly or anything, but there really wasn't a ton of like seeking other resources and other help with mental health. And so I think that the internet today and just the access that we have and the blanket that's kind of been thrown off this taboo subject of mental health is really helpful in marriage. I think especially with having the different backgrounds, it's not just me saying, hey, I think it would be really helpful if we go talk to somebody because we're not working through this. We could do it online. We don't even have to know the person. We don't have to worry about if somebody sees us walking into this office. You know, those are the things that people think about if they've never been to counseling, if they've never been to therapy. It is very much this, this fear of judgment. So I think that it's so helpful. I send parenting reels to Tyler constantly. Love. Literally, I sent him one last night and he's like, babe, 
what is this one about? Like he didn't even like click on it yet. And I was like, oh, babe, she is talking about when Lucy is a preteen. And he's like, baby, we have some time before I get there. So I'm going to save that one. And I'm like, okay, cool. <laughs> like, but I think it's great. I'm here for all any help I can get. I am not an incredible parent. Like I'm trying my best. I know that my kids know that they're loved and that's so much, but anything that you can give me to be more patient, be more kind, be more understanding of where my kids are at or my husband is at, please tell me, give me the resources. I'm grateful for it. We are not above help. No, no. We are not above it. Not above help. No. So let's pivot slightly to a topic that will we ever figure it out? I don't know. But who knows? It's so, so important. And that is money and money and marriage, especially for millennials. Like we have had the pleasure of coming into the economy at some interesting times with student loans and recessions and the pandemic. It's just a lot. And so is navigating finances with another person. So how does that look like for you and Tyler? Do you talk about money a lot? Do you, how does how does that work for you guys? So the way that we we like to think of these like big pillars in our marriage, you know, the ones that end up causing a lot of divorces, I feel like should always be talked about because I feel like those stats that we have on like, you know, most marriages end over loss of a child, finances, you know, adultery, those, all of those things, like we should be talking about them because most likely those people weren't talking about them. Yep. Money is usually the last thing that people let go of when it comes to control. I think that this is like the last point of just kind of holding on really tight to something because you work hard for your stuff. I get it. Like, you you know, you do. You like, you go to work, you come home, you make your money. It, it's hard to, to just like relinquish control and be like, okay, so now this other person has say over where this goes and, and what it's for and you know, what the priorities are as we've gotten older and as we've progressed in our careers and have been successful, money has still stayed this very like hard subject of like, what, what are we doing now? It's ever changing. Like, what are our priorities now? It is constant checking in. It is, hey, I don't think we should do this right now because we need to pay off some of this debt. I mean, I wish I could come here with like a system of like what we do, but honestly, it's just kind of like laying all of our cards on the table and being like, where do we need to sacrifice some? And it's that communication thing, man. I think that you're going to have way more success with managing money and what that looks like for your family if you are open and honest to having a conversation about it regular, regularly. Regularly. Yes. Regularly. And I think like the moral of the story is, when you're on the same page, things are easy and fun and great. Yeah. It's when there's question marks and mm -hmm. not willing to be vulnerable in conversations. Mm -hmm. And that's when it gets hard and difficult. But so many things can just be solved way quicker and more easily. If you talk about things. Very efficient. Yeah. And you commit to being on the same team about things. And they're just like non-negotiables. One for us is like that we are, that we're not taking on a ton of debt if we have to. I know that like living debt-free is like the most ideal situation. There have been definite moments in our marriage that we've had to take on debt and, you know, okay, so what's the next right choice from that decision that had to be made that way? Like, what's the next right choice? And that is to pay it off as quickly as we can. And so like, what does that look like? How do we rearrange? You got to roll with like your, don't compare yourself to another family because that that is no, that is a very, very slippery slope when it comes to money. Dangerous. Focus on your own plate. Like that's, that's probably my number one money advice. I'm just going to go with that is focus on your own plate, focus on your own person, look at what you're doing, champion each other and the successes that you're having. Every win, whether it's a new leaf blower or a new car, be excited about it. Like it, you know, I mean, like you worked hard for that. 
when you are keeping your eyes on your own paper, on your own yard and house, like those small wins are so huge because you are appreciating it for what it is and not comparing it to the wins that others seem to be getting. Yes, very much. Oh, I love that. What's the best part of being married for you? (laughs) (laughs) Um, I'm going to be real. Like intimacy is a great part of marriage and I'm here for it. Yeah. And that's what we're going to say on that. It is beautiful. It is exciting. I love that part of our marriage. The other best part of being married is just that person, that security, that safety, having my person. Like he is the person that I want to talk to when something happens. He is the person that I want to run to if I'm like, hey, I'm really upset. I'm really This happened today and I don't know what to do. I don't know how I'm going to make it right. I would have no idea what's going on. He has such a great way of just like calming me down and being like, we're going to figure it out. It's going to be fine. I would say one of the most unexpected things about being married is how much, yes, we love to do things together, but how mm-hmm. good it feels for us to have our own little things that we love. Yes. And then how excited we get to hear the other person talk about that thing. Like, yes. For example, Alex, every Sunday morning does old man basketball. He and like all the old (laughs) 40 year old, 30 year old, 40 year olds, they all play basketball for two hours every Sunday. And he comes home from that. And the moment he walks in, oh my gosh, he's like limping and is so disgusting. I'm like, before you touch anything, you need to jump in the shower. But he is just glowing. Right. Because he just did something that was so fun for him, filled him up. And then he loves seeing me being so excited to be like, so how'd it go today? Like, was it hard? Or were there 20 year olds that came in and like beat you? <laughs> you know, like, right. It's that, that is something that I did not realize I would love so much about a marriage is feeling like there's someone who is going to, yes, know exactly how to handle you when you are low, 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 Mm -hmm. and exactly know how to handle and celebrate when you're high, high, high. Like, absolutely. That's the best thing for me. And I think it's it's tricky too. That like, I think being freshly married, you can be like really insecure and like, okay, but wait, if I, you know, if he's going all the time or like doing something without me, like that's what we signed up for. We're going to be together. Like we're doing things together always now. Like that's what this is. But when you met your person, you were so drawn to them. You were so excited about them because of the person they had been building this entire time. Like they had been figuring out what makes them tick and what makes them glow and what makes them just like so hype about, you know, whatever they're doing. And that's what was so attractive about them. And so like for us, if Tyler's not doing those things, if we're both starting to look vanilla, like, I'm like, you need to go play golf with somebody. Mm-hmm. You need to go go write a song with someone. Go sing somewhere. Go find a friend. I say it a lot. I'm like, you need to find a friend. Because I can just see that there's a lot of togetherness happening. And that's beautiful and great. And I love him so much. But I, I need you to be the best you and filling your tank so that we can be our best and, you know, be the people that, that we're supposed to be. So... Oh, what a great way to end it. Love it. Wow. Love that. Okay, you ready for some rapid fire? (laughs) Something wonderful Tyler does that makes you so, so happy. All right, PG, going to keep this clean and quick. He takes out the car seat. Okay, so we have one car seat for Cal and we switch between cars. So if I forget the car seat, he will just unlatch it and put it in the car and I don't have a panic attack when I'm walking out to my car and I'm like, oh my God, I forgot to switch the car seat. He's already done it and that makes me really, really, really happy. The things that are so romantic when... And so small. Just so small. What's something that Alex does? (sighs) You know what? It's the things that he does that I don't have to ask a thousand times. I can't think of a car seat example right now, but... It's it's those, it's those things. little things. It's the little ones. Yeah. Yeah. Okay. Something Tyler does that makes you want to shoot yourself into the sun. <laughs> <laughs> Why does that make me laugh? Socks. 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 I socks. Jeez. Socks. Why do they have to? It is like if they come in, if they come in from a long day 
and they take their number one. I don't know if anybody else's husbands do this, but like Tyler, you had it coming. You've done it for so long and I've asked you why you do it. So now it's going to be public knowledge. He walks in the door, four steps, sets down his stuff, pants down to his ankles, <laughs> shoes off. Why? Why is this the time and place? Why is it that I'm cooking a pot roast and I look over and you're just pants to the ground? But that's fine. But the sock, everything else will get put away or like put in the hamper. Yep. But literally his socks stay on in that moment and then he'll like eat dinner. And then sometime around the halftime mark of the first show, I see sock off, sock off made into a ball, thrown into the sun. Yes. And now the dog has it. Now the and dog now the has dog... the socks. Yes. And now I'm being yelled at some morning down the road that you can't find a match to your socks. And I'm like, well, where could they be? Boomer, do you know where his socks are? I just... The socks oh, really kill me. They really gosh. throw me over the edge. It's And it's the socks that land six inches like from the hamper. Oh, my gosh. At the door? Yes. At the... I can't... Okay. Okay, so that was easy socks. Okay, the quickest way to resolve a conflict between you two. I mean, Touch me, baby. <laughs> <laughs> Pretty self explanatory. So uh, self explanatory. But like the quickest way, honestly, I can feel like just the thickest kind of tension between us. And I swear something happens if he brushes up against me or takes my hand or. Rubs the back, I mean, gives a little rubs massage. Rubs the back, yes. yeah. Just anything. Anything yep. like that is an immediate diffuser of like, crap. Like, this yep. isn't worth it. We're on the same team. We're fine. Yep. Okay, well, this was amazing. This... I had so much fun. <laughs> I hope some of my advice is like sound. Like, I, I just can't wait for like marriage therapists to hear this and be like, well, that was wrong. Yeah, I, I think we maybe need a little disclaimer that we are not professionals. We are just absolutely not two women who have been at this for 12 slash 13 years <laughs> and we are still figuring things out. Some things we have figured out and some things we are still wrestling with, but it's always helpful for us to just talk about it. And be like, is this going on with you guys? Like, this is something we're struggling it's with. It's so helpful. Like, yeah, like it is happening. It is happening here. It's happening there. I'm in Florida. You're in Illinois. Completely different people. And yeah. it happens. And I mean, if I find anything out that like really helps me, I'll let you know. But right back at you. You know, it's just one day at a time. And talking about it, keeping it real. Love it. Well, until next time, Jessalyn Bray. Peace. 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 All right, you guys, I'd like to say a little blessing over you as we leave this time together and get back to our days. No matter where life takes you, I hope you feel the warmth of giving your heart to someone and receiving theirs in return. I hope you have the courage to be vulnerable and the courage to say what you need. I hope that you have more belly laughs than you can count and that whisper fights behind closed doors are kept to a minimum. And above all, I hope your hopes for the future outweigh your fears and that love for your people wins at the end of every day. This is the part of the episode where we usually give you a little tip you can tuck in your pocket and take with you. So here's what I've got for you today. For us, it is so, so critical that we make an effort to have time together, just the two of us on a weekly basis. Whether it's dinner out or a quick 30 minute walk, or if we manage to get a weekend away, book the babysitter, and make it happen. Continuing to date your spouse by taking an interest in each other and spending time together, whether it's fun and spontaneous, or if it's a time to talk through some tough conversations, it is so, so crucial for our marriage. Thank you for listening to The Simplified Podcast. You can find show notes for this episode at emilylay.com slash podcast, where you can check out links and resources we mentioned here, and you can shop the Simplified brand of planners and products. You can also follow me on Instagram at Laura Kastner and our brand at Simplified for tons of simplicity tips and inspiration to get you through the day. And hey, if you want these kinds of great conversations in your life every week, then you should go follow our show. It'll just show up right on your phone. Talk about automated. And if you want to listen to the show without ads in a few days early, then check out the premium version of our show on Apple Podcasts. Well, that's what we've got for you today. Be sure to tune in next week for more Simplified Goodness. Until then, I hope you have a great week. Bye, friends.